Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Gopi Janavallabha Shri Varadhari Gopi Janavallabha Shri Varadhari Yashodanandana Vajajana Rangana Yashodanandana Vajajana Rangana Yashodanandana Vajajana Rangana Yashodanandana Vajajana Rangana Yamuna Tiravana Chari Yamuna Tiravana Chari Yamuna Iravana Shari Jaya Radhamadhava Kunjari Nami Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjari Nami Gopi Jana Vallabha Jivadhari Gopi Jana Vallabha Press. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So we're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, first canto, 11th chapter. Verses one, two, and three. So we'll recite the uh, verses word for word and the purports, and then we'll have the Mangla churn, and then we will begin our discussion. <clears throat> so, reading from one, eleven, one. Sutta Uvachaham Antaradan sa Upar Raja Shradhan Janapadan Sukam Dadomo Darvaram Te Sham Vishadam Shamayan Niva. The word for it Sutta Uvacha Sutta Goswami said Antaran, the country known as Antaran, Dwarka, Saha, he, Upar Raja. Reaching the border of Shadhan, most prosperous, Janapadan, city, Swakan, his own, 
Tadmo sounded Dharavaram, the most auspicious concha, Panchajanya, Tesham, of them, Vishadam, dejection, Shamayan, pacifying, Eva, seemingly. Translation and purport, all by his divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Dhan Swami Maharaj, Shila Prabhupada, Shila Prabhupada Kijai. Shudha Goswami said, upon reaching the border of his most prosperous metropolis, known as the country of <clears throat> Anarthas Dwarka, the Lord sounded his auspicious concha, heralding his arrival and apparently pacifying the dejection of the inhabitants. Purport. The beloved Lord was away from his prosperous metropolis of Dwarka for a considerably long period because of the battle of Kurukshetra. And thus, all the inhabitants were overcome with the melancholia due to the, se the separation. When the Lord descends to earth, his eternal associates also come with him, just as the entourage of a king accompanies him. Such associates of the Lord are eternally liberated souls, and they cannot bear the separation of the Lord, for, Lord even for a moment because of intense affection for the Lord. Thus, the inhabitants of the city of Dwaraka were in a mood of dejection and expected the arrival of the Lord at any moment. So the heralding sound of the auspicious conch shell was very encouraging and apparently the sound pacified their dejection. They were still more aspiring to see the Lord amongst themselves and all of them became alert to receive him in the befitting manner. These are the signs of spontaneous love and Godhead. Then reading text 111.2. Sapuja kashe double daro daro yoru maksma dara shor shanashor nimam the dham yam anakarakan jasam pute the tab jakande kalahamja utsanaha. Word for word. Saha. That. Uja kashe become brilliant, became brilliant. Dola udaraha, white and fat, bold. Daraha, conch shell, api, although it is so. Rukramasya, of the great endeavor, of adharashona, by the transcendental quality of his lips. Shunima, reddened. Tadhamya, manaha, sound, being sounded. Karakanja sampute being caught by the grip of the lotus hand, yatha, as it is, abjakande, by the stems of the lotus flowers, kalaham shah, duckling song, utsavana, loudly sounding. Translation. The white and fat bold conch shell, being gripped by the hand of Lord Krishna and sounded by him, appeared to be reddened by the touch of his transcendental lips. It seemed that a white swan was playing in the stems of red lotus flowers, purple. The redness of the white conch shell due to the lip touch of the Lord is a symbol of spiritual significance. The Lord is all spirit and matter is ignorance of this spiritual existence. Actually, there is nothing like matter in, this, in spiritual enlightenment. And this spiritual enlightenment takes place at once by the contact of the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. The Lord is present in every particle of all existence, and he can manifest his presence in any one. By, adherent, uh, by ardent love and devotion, devotional service to the Lord, or in other words, by spiritual contact with the Lord, everything becomes spiritually reddened, like the conch shell in the grip of the Lord. And the Paramahamsa, or the supremely intelligent person, plays the part of the duckling swan in the water of spiritual bliss, eternally decorated by the lotus flower of the Lord's lotus feet. And our final verse, one eleven three. Dham upashyata nidanam jagat bhaya vayavaham patyu dyohu praja sarva bhate darshan lala saha. Word for word, dham, that, upashyatya, having overheard, Nidhanam, sound, jagat bhaya, the fear of material existence, bhaya avaham, the threatening principle, 
prati towards udyuhu udayuhu rapidly proceeded prajaha the citizen sarva all vrata the protector darshana audience lalasaha having so desired translation the citizens of dwarka having heard that sound which threatens fear personified in the material world began to run towards him fast just to have a long desired audience with the lord who is the protector of all devotees purport as already explained the citizens of dwarka who lived at the time of lord krishna's presence there were all liberated souls who descended there along with the lord's entourage uh, as as entourage all were very anxious to have an audience with the lord although because of spiritual contact they were never separated from the lord just as the gopis at vrindavan used to think of krishna while he was away <clears throat> from the village for cow herding engagements the citizens of dwarka were all immersed in thought of the lord while he was away from dwarka to attend the battle of kurukshetra some distinguished fiction writer in bengal concluded that the krishna vrindavan and that of mathura and that of dwarka are were different personalities historically there is no truth in this conclusion the krishna of kurukshetra and the krishna of dwarka are one and the same personality the citizens of dwarka were thus in a state of melancholy due to the lord's absence from the transcendental city as much as we are put in a state of melancholy at night because of the absence of the sun the sound heralded by lord krishna was something like the heralding of the sunrise in the morning so all the citizens of dwarka woke from a state of slumber because of the sunrise of krishna and they all hastened towards him just to have an audience the devotees of the lord know no one else as protector this sound of the lord is identical with the lord as we have tried to explain by the non dual position of the lord the material existence of our present status is full of fear out of four problems of material existence namely the food problem the shelter problem the fear problem and the mating problem the fear problem gives us more trouble than others we are always fearful due to our ignorance of the next problem the whole material existence is full of problems and thus the fear problem is always prominent this is due to our association with the illusory energy of the lord known as maya or external energy yet all fear is vanished as soon as the sound of the lord represented by his holy name as it was sounded by lord shri chaitanya mahaprabhu in the following 16 words hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare we can take advantage of these sounds and be free from all threatening problems of material existence so we'll recite the mangal charan and then begin the discussion <clears throat> om gyana timirandhasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun vilitam jena tasmai shri gurave namaha shri jayadanya mano vishtam sthapitam jena bhutale swayam rupakadamahyam viradi swaparandikam vandeham shri guru shri udapada kamalam shri gurun vishnavam shya Rupam Sagajatam Sahagan Raghunatham Vidam Tham Sajeevam Sadvaitam Sabhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Siradha Krishna Padan Sahagana Dalita Shivisha Khan Vitam Shya He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Patim Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namoste Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavani Shuri Vrishabhanu Shute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripasandhubhya Evacha Patitanam Bhavanebhyo Vishnavebhyo Namunamaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gradha Shri Vasadi Gauravata Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Vamshi Vivo Shidakaranda Vanira Dava, Titam Bharata Runabhimba Paladha Roshtha, Purne Dusundara Mukhada Ravindanetra, Krishna Param, 
Hare Krishna, good morning. I hope everybody is well. Thank you for tuning in uh, this morning. Um, so reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, 11th chapter, verse 1, 2, and 3, respectively. So, <clears throat> Karna Chaitanya Prabhu is very kindly, every week he sends a synopsis of uh, what's happening in the Bhagavatam classes, where we were up to, just to re refresh everybody's memory. And it was very nicely summarized in that, uh, in that, in that message. So the Lord has finally uh, arrived, almost arrived at Dorica, and all the citizens are eager to gain his darshan once again. So he's at the border here in, uh, in the first verse. Sita Goswami is describing the scene. When we hear the uh, descriptions from the Srimad Bhagavatam, whether it's Sutta Goswami or Shukadev Goswami or any of the other wonderful speakers, it is just like uh, transcendental television. The whole scene is set so vividly, so nicely with the beautiful descriptions, uh, which are then further elaborated by the Acharyas respectively. So here the Lord uh, has reached the border of, of the metropolis known as a country of uh, Dwaraka. So today Dwaraka is there, the geographical location um, is there, but the city itself submerged upon the uh, disappearance of uh, Sri Krishna and the Yadu dynasty. Um, some remnants are there. Bet Dwaraka, they say a very, very small tract of land there near the sea is uh, considered to be some of the only uh, original remnants but the Dwaraka city, the Dwaraka town still has many of ancient artifacts and things we can see. And some years ago, uh, they were um, doing some archeological surveys for some other purpose. And then they stumbled upon, they say, the, the city of, of Dwaraka. They carbon dated the stones and they found all sorts of other things. And then they did some excavation on the land and they realized that actually this, city as described in the Puranas and the, and the Srimad Bhagavatam in particular may just have existed <laughs> just like they said the same thing about the the, the bridge uh, that that was built by Lord Ramchandra and his uh, army but uh, nevertheless we take the description of the Srimad Bhagavatam um, as as fact um, so Dwarika is still there and sometimes we may uh, as devotees in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we are often um, attracted to the pastimes of Vrindavan. And therefore, sometimes there may be a tendency, a leaning towards um, leaving all the Dwaraka stuff and going straight for the Vrindavan stuff. So leaving all the first canto behind and then delving as quickly as possible to the 10th canto and concentrating on the Lord's Vrindavan pastime because we hear that uh, the Lord is, is fully manifest as Brajananda and Sri Krishna in uh, Braja Vrindavan. However, this, uh, the Dwaraka pastimes, as Srila Prabhupada mentions in, in the purport later on, uh, the Dwaraka Desh Krishna or the Kurukshetra Krishna or the Vrindavan Krishna are all the same one Krishna. And to go through the Srimad Bhagavatam systematically, we've mentioned this before, is very, very important so that we begin to understand the position of Sri Krishna. So, so far we've heard the wonderful dealings between Sri Krishna and the Pandavas and their wonderful relationship and how he pacifies uh, all of them after the war, how he comes to the rescue again and again. And now finally he's returned, returning home. And when we hear about Sri Krishna, especially in the first canto, we understand that his majesty is unrivaled and actually he is uh, very affectionate uh, to his devotees. And we understand, we get a glimpse of Krishna's opulence and we also get a glimpse of um, how devotees serve him in the mood of uh, servitude, dasya bhakti. 
as as the inhabitants of Dwaraka respectively do, and you'll hear about their presentations to the Lord as he enters the, the city uh, later in later verses. So the Dwaraka pastimes are as important as the Vrindavan pastimes and uh, neophyte devotees like myself, you know, we should we should be very careful not to um, jump over these these wonderful uh, descriptions of the Lord. One time, um, Srila Prabhupada was uh, was um, was with his devotees in the evening, and they had a, a system of reading Krishna book. And we hear that um, the devotee reading the the Krishna the Krishna book. He asked Srila Prabhupada, where should we read from? <laughs> where should we read from today? And Srila Prabhupada said, anywhere. He said, Krishna is just like uh, a sweet bowl. Wherever you bite, it is sweet. So everywhere. The pastimes of Sri Krishna, Srila Prabhupada is trying to point out, is just like, is non-different from Krishna. Everywhere is sweet. Everything is wonderful about Krishna. Yeah. Shripad Vallabhacharya in his uh, Madhurashtakam, he begins to describe the sweetness of Krishna. And each verse ends with Madhura Adipade Akilam Madhuram. Everything about Krishna is sweet. Everything about Krishna, whichever angle. But yet verse after verse after verse after verse, he's listing, this is sweet about Krishna. Krishna's smile is sweet. Krishna's glance is sweet. Krishna, the way he moves is sweet. Krishna's words are sweet. The way Krishna sings is sweet. And still he, he's pouring out his appreciation for that sweet Lord. And again, every verse, Maturadi Pade, Akhila Maduram. So when we develop a taste for hearing about Krishna, then we'll uh, begin to understand actually uh, everything about Krishna, not just the Vrindavan pastimes is sweet as the next or the previous pastime. So we hear in the in the purport, Srila Prabhupada is mentioning that she Krishna spent a long time time away from uh, Dwarika, um, listening to some scholarly devotees discussing this point, uh, some calculations have been made and actually Krishna spends a lot of time outside of Dwarika, a lot of time is spent outside of Dwarika with the Pandavas in particular um, in Hastinapur, any, any excuse Krishna <laughs> leaves Dwarika to go to be with the Pandavas. So the Dwarika Vasis actually spent a lot of their time in separation for, from the Lord. Uh, and they uh, felt that um, distance from the Lord, and Srila Prabhupada mentions that here. The inhabitants of Reclaimwood are on due to the separation. Srila Prabhupada mentions a very important point in the, in the first purport, that when the Lord descends to the earth, his eternal associates also come with him, just as an entourage of a king accompanies him. When we see a world leader, especially an American leader, uh, when they travel, they have a whole entourage. They have the Air Force One, a huge, gigantic jumbo jet airplane, and they have a whole um, uh, range of, of people accompanied, doctors even. Uh, it has a medical team, a security team, vehicles even get you know, transported everywhere um, so that you know, he, he travels safely, she travels safely. So in this way, you know, we can see that from a material point of view, how an important person travels with this whole entourage. And Srila Prabhupada points out here that the Lord also ap appears with his eternal associates in this way. Now we can imagine that if you're an eternal associate of the Lord and then there's some separation, how intense that separation must be. Thus the inhabitants of the city of Dwaraka, Srila Prabhupada says, were in a mood of dejection and expected the arrival of the Lord at any moment. So we, see, we hear that later on in the purport also in the next verse, Srila Prabhupada mentions how this mood of separation is something that's apparent throughout the pastimes of Sri Krishna. Even in the pastimes of Lord Ramchandra, when Lord Ramchandra leaves Ayodhya, there is a, there is a absence of, of the very life of the Ayodhya Rasis for 12 very, very long years for them. Uh, until he returns. So they were counting the days until the Lord returns. Here the Dwaraka Vasis are expecting the Lord. Any day now he'll come, any moment now he'll come. So when they hear that the Lord is about to come uh, and they hear the, the conch shell, the auspicious conch shell, that encouraged them greatly. The auspicious conch shell, we know, we know is known as, uh, is called Panchajanya. There's a whole history behind the, the conch shell. But in the Bhagavad Gita, we hear about this conch shell being uh, uh, sounded by the Lord. Uh, 
Panchajanya, Rishikesha, Devadatta, Dhananjaya. We hear that in, in the first chapter of the Bhagavad Gita that uh, Lord Krishna sounds his conch shell, Arjun sounds his conch shell, Bhim, Nakosa, Deva, Yudhishthira, everybody sounds their conch shell. And this uh, sends a clear message to Dhritarashtra. Srila Prabhupada talks about this in his purport. Uh, the Acharyas mention that uh, this sends a clear message to Dhritarashtra that the end is very near for the Kaurav dynasty. And it makes Duryodhan also tremble on the other side because this, this sound, these corn shells are uh, tumultuous. They, they, they make everybody shake on the other side. Their hearts are sinking. They realize that even though we are outnumbering the enemy, something incredible is about to take place. Uh, we hear uh, in the Mahabharata that Shakuni uh, warns Duryodhan. And Duryodhan thinks that actually we'll win the war. Don't worry, my dear uncle. And his uncle says, just remember Duryodhan, you know, five fingers make a fist, but a hundred fingers can never ever do that. So he was always warning him, but still he, he carried on until this, this moment. So right from the very beginning of the Mahabharata war, the Battle of Kurukshetra, beginning with the auspicious conch shell being uh, sounded by Sri Krishna, we know that there will only be victory for those who are under the shelter of Sri Krishna. So here, the same conch shell is uh, recited, uh, resounded. I was reflecting on the, the point of the conch shell uh, over the last few days, um, thinking about this uh, presentation. And the conch shell is featured throughout the Srimad Bhagavatam um, as a symbol of the Lord, and especially when the Lord uh, resounds, uh, he, he, he blows his conch shell to appease his devotees. And this is uh, one of the places he does it for the first time in the first canto. <clears throat> the other place we hear the uh, conch shell being uh, recited, uh, 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 sorry, sorry, featured, um, comes later on in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, something that I was listening to for a few days, actually, uh, is, the, is, the, is the Dhruva Charitra. When Dhruva Maharaj, this small boy, he goes into the forest, he meets his spiritual master, Narada Muni, and Narada Muni <clears throat> says to him, go back, you are still a small child. You can, you can take up the spiritual process later on. But his determination is so great that Narada Muni is impressed. And he gives him his mercy. He gives him initiation into the Dwadakshara Mantra. And he gives him the formula for attaining God. Go to Vrindavan and there in the forest meditate on the Lord. And he gives him a whole process and procedure uh, for doing that. After a very long time of meditation and austerities, uh, the Lord appears before Dhruva Maharaj. And I was listening to a description yesterday of this. It's described that when Dhruva Maharaj opened his eyes and he saw the Lord, he didn't know what to do. He was completely overwhelmed with love for the Lord. And he's, and he's approaching the Lord, he's touching the Lord, he's smelling the Lord. The Lord is all auspicious, all wonderful. Everything about the Lord is wonderful. And he's embracing the Lord, he's touching the Lord, and the Lord realized that this boy doesn't know what to do or what to say. But at that point, the Lord touches Dhruva Maharaj's head with the conch shell. And it's interesting how when we, when we hear such pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj, uh, we hear the pastimes of Dwarakavasis, uh, how in one way, they are very distant from the Vrindavan pastimes that we are aspiring for in the line of uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But again, reflecting on this point, we see that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself would listen to the pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj and Prahlad Maharaj in particular. Um, he would uh, go to his, his, his devotees in particular, Shikadadar Pandit Prabhu, whose parents say was very recently. And he would ask him to recite the pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj and Prahlad Maharaj in particular. And we hear that in the Chaitanya Bhagavat and the Chaitanya Charitamrita, how Gadadhar Pandit Prabhu would uh, recite these pastimes. Sri Gadadhar Pandit Prabhu is the member of the Panchatattva, a very, very integral part of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, parshads, his intimate associates, one of the Panchatattva members. And Amongst his many services, Sachi Mata asked him to uh, always be with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, never leave his side in case he was injured, in case he needed some help. 
So he took this service very seriously and he stayed with the Lord as his constant companion, even into Jagannath Puri. And there Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would go regularly to hear him recite the Srimad Bhagavatam, in particular the Dhruva and Prahlad Charitra. So again and again and again, every day, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would listen to these pastimes and request him specifically to go through these two uh, sections of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Now, again, it seems very distant from the mood of Vrindavan. So the question could be raised that why did Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu particularly uh, enjoy or relish these two particular uh, uh, recitations, the, these charitras? And the answer is simple. Um, the Lord loves his devotees and the Lord loves to hear about his devotees, just like we like to or we love to hear about the Lord and his interactions. Similarly, with the Lord himself, Lord Chaitanya is Radha Krishna, Hiyanya. he likes to hear about the pastimes of his devotees. So for us, the past, these pastimes, be it Dwarika, be it Dhruva Maharaj, or, or be it uh, Prahlad Maharaj, we know, yes, the Lord arrived at Dwarika, he blew his conch shell, everybody was happy to see him, they gave him some presents. Yes, the small boy went into the forest and Narada Muni tested him and the demigods were worried and the Lord appeared, hit him on the, uh, not hit him, <laughs> tapped him on the head with the conch shell and he said some nice words. Okay, okay, let's go, let's go, carry on. Oh yes, this is a small boy. He was harassed by his father and he was tortured. He was this, this, this. Yeah, we okay, let's get to the juicy bit. When does the Lord come? When does he rip up the stomach of here in the Krishna court? But here Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is, is giving the uh, example of how to hear. Hear with that love, hear with that rapt attention so that we can also understand the mood of what it means to be uh, determined, what it means to be devoted, what it means to be fearless having taken shelter of the Lord and his holy name. Uh, so we have Nasimha Jatadasi coming up next week. And it is a wonderful opportunity to reflect on the pastime and specifically the characteristics and the qualities of Pallad Maharaj so that we can develop them within ourselves as well. Uh, one time his holiness Jade Wait this one, he came to Leicester for Nasimha Jatadasi. And I asked the question, how do we, we become like Prahlad Maharaj, and Maharaj said, by hearing about Prahlad Maharaj. That was it, that was his answer. And then I said, what, what, how do we become like Prahlad Maharaj? I didn't understand what he meant. And Maharaj repeated it. And I, you know, for my memory, you know, I may have asked two or three times and the same answer was there. And then uh, you know, the, the penny dropped, I understood what it meant. By hearing about the pastimes, the qualities, the attributes of Prahlad Maharaj, then hopefully, somehow or other, these qualities will manifest within ourselves as well. So these pastimes are not ordinary. We shouldn't jump to this or that or the other. We should go systematically through the Srimad Bhagavatam so that we understand the nature of the Lord and his devotees so that we'll be fit and ready to receive the Lord fully in the 10th canto. So the mood of separation is, is very intense, and, but the conch shell is heralding uh, all auspiciousness for the Dwaraka Vasis. In verse 2, uh, one, 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 eleven, two, the white and fat bowl conch shell being gripped by the hand of Krishna and sounded by him appeared to be reddened by the touch of his transcendental lips. It seemed that a white swan was playing in the stems of the red lotus flowers. So here we have another description of the Lord, uh, reddened by the touch of his transcendental lips. So we hear in Kartik about uh, this, this redness um, of, of, of the Lord on the Lord's face. His face is kissed again and again by Mother Yashoda. We hear about that. Uh, we hear about the bimba fruit. So uh, we, we hear these wonderful descriptions. And again, it paints this beautiful image you know, we just need to listen, we need to read, and then we'll be able to get a glimpse of the beauty of Sri Krishna. In this uh, purport, Srila Prabhupada um, mentions uh, various points. Uh, and the most, one of the most important points is that the Lord is all spirit and matter is ignorance of this spiritual existence. And that's quite a, a deep spiritual uh, concept. But Srila Prabhupada summarizes it into one sentence. And this is the 
the amazing uh, quality that Srila Prabhupada has, that he's taken something from a transcendental language, Devanagari Sanskrit, he's taken something from Srila Vyasadeva, he's taken something from all the Acharyas, and then he's presented it into English in, the, in this most wonderful way. Srila Prabhupada mentions, and you hear this in, in conversations, that uh, when, he, when he speaks these purports, when he's dictating or when he's writing in his early days, he is very, very careful about the language he uses. Um, and he writes very, very carefully. And we also hear uh, in various places that Srila Prabhupada is reading his books. And when people ask him, why are you reading your own books? He said, I did not write this book. So in this way, we, you know, we also remember that this, the message that Srila Prabhupada is giving is not ordinary. It's coming directly from the spiritual sky. So these philosophical concepts, and this is why it's important to read uh, the books regularly so that we begin to understand the greatness of Sri Krishna and we appreciate what Srila Prabhupada is actually giving us in his purport. So the Lord is all spirit and matter is ignorance of this spiritual existence. So everything uh, in this material world is matter. It don't matter, nothing is alive. It's only spirit which is making things move and, and we're able to do things. But the Lord is all spirit. The Lord is all spirit. Uh, material uh, nature is matter, is dull matter. And the matter is ignorance of this spiritual existence. Actually, there is nothing like matter in spiritual enlightenment. And this spiritual enlightenment takes place at once by the contact of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. The Lord is present in every particle of all existence and he can manifest his presence in anyone. So how do we become spiritual? If everything is ignorant, is everything is material, then how do we make that connection? If the Lord is everywhere, and all religions, all traditions will talk about the omniscience of the Lord, the om omnipresence of the Lord. So Srila Prabhupada mentions then, by, uh, uh, by ordinary love and devotional service to the Lord, or in other words, by spiritual contact with the Lord, everything becomes spiritually reddened, like the conch shell in the grip of the Lord. There we go, that's how we do it, by connecting with Sri Krishna. You know, uh, this is why Srila Prabhupada talks about bhakti yoga a lot, devotional service, Every, any, any kind of yoga you'll find in the Bhagavad Gita, Srila Prabhupada sometimes uh, called it Krishna consciousness or bhakti yoga or devotional service, because ultimately this is the purpose of yoga, to connect with God, to connect with the divine. Who is that divine? That is Sri Krishna. How do we make that connection through divine loving service? So Srila Prabhupada mentions by ardent love and devotional service, in other words, by spiritual contact with the Lord, everything becomes spiritually reddened, like the conch shell in the grip of the Lord. And then he says, and the Paramahamsa, or the supremely intelligent person, plays the part of a duckling swan in the water of spiritual bliss eternally decorated by the Lord, by the flower of the Lord's lotus feet. So uh, here Srila Prabhupada uh, talks about the, um, uh, the Paramahamsas, the pure devotees who are enjoying uh, gliding around in the, in, in, in the lake where there are lots of uh, lotus flowers. A Paramahamsa, so Hamsa is a swan, Param means great, the great swan, the great swan-like devotees. And Srila Prabhupada calls them here the supremely intelligent person. So the swan-like devotees were swimming around in this beautiful lake, which is full of lotus flowers. Uh, when, I, uh, when I share my reflections, when, I'm, when I speak, I like to re recite the verse from the Mukundamala Stotra from uh, Kula Shekhar. Um, Krishna Tvari Padapada, Sorry, Krishna Tvariya Pada Pankaja Panjarantam Advaitame Vishutumana Sarajaham Saprana Prayana Samaye Kapavata Pitte Kantavara Vidos Maranam Putaste. The translation is very beautiful. It goes like this O Krishna, please allow my mind to immediately yield to your lotus feet, lotus flower like feet, just as the flamingo enters into the labyrinth of the lotus flower stems. So describing um, uh, flamingo swans who are enjoying uh, being amongst the lotus flowers. 
when at that moment of my last breath, my throat becomes constricted by the action of the bodily humors, air, bile, and phlegm. How will I be able to remember you? So here, uh, the devotee is praying that let my mind always uh, take pleasure at your lotus feet, may always be attached, attracted to your lotus feet, just like the swan, the flamingo, enters into the maze of lotus flowers and is, as in, and is enjoying in that way. Similarly, let me remember you now, just in case at the time of my death, I am not able to remember you when I will be choked up with all the bodily fluids and all the difficulties that I may have. How will I remember you at that point? So let me, let me remember you now and let you, all, let you also come into my mind at that time when uh, I am not able to remember you. So here, Srila Prabhupada mentions that the Paramahamsas are always enjoying uh, that connection with the Supreme Lord at his lotus feet. And then finally, the last verse, 111.3, the citizens of Dwaraka, having heard that sound which threatens fear personified in the material world, began to run towards him fast, just to have a long desired audience with the Lord, who is a protector of all devotees. And in the purport, Srila Prabhupada mentions um, that he reminds us again that uh, the citizens of Dwaraka who live at the time of Krishna's presence there were all liberated souls who descended there along with the Lord as his entourage. So when the Lord descends, everyone, uh, all of his eternal associates are returned with him. Souls are given an opportunity to connect in divine loving service with him, see him, engage with him in loving pastimes, uh, are able to render service to him. And after a long time, he has returned back to Dwaraka. And Sri Prabhupada mentions all were very anxious to have an audience with the Lord. So Srila Prabhupada mentions uh, in some recordings that there is no anxiety for a devotee. There is no anxiety for a devotee. Uh, and then later on, Srila Prabhupada mentions that the only anxiety is anxiety for Krishna. How will I serve Krishna? Where is the offering? We need to get this. We need to do that. Some, some festival is coming up. How will we make it nicer than last time? How will we make the facilities nice for Krishna's guests? So this is the anxiety that devotees have. It may appear like uh, normal anxiety or material anxiety or something, but anxiety for Krishna is the topmost type of anxiety. And this is why devotees sometimes are stressed out. <laughs> because they are always anxious to serve Krishna better. They always want to uh, improve their service. They reflect on how did it go yesterday? How did it go last year for Janmashtami? Or how did it go for something? How will we make things nicer, better, more comfortable for the Lord, more pleasing for him and his guests? How will we uh, spread uh, the, the, the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? How will we get the message of Srila Prabhupada to everybody? This is transcendental anxiety. So in Vaikuntha, Srila Prabhupada mentions that Vaikuntha means the place of no anxiety. And this is the opposite. This material world is a place full of anxiety. But even the spiritual world, the thought that they have, whether it's Vaikuntha or, or Dwaraka or Mathura, Vrindavan or Navadvip, whichever uh, section of the spiritual sky, the anxiety is always to serve Krishna. But this anxiety is actually, actually the greatest bliss. This anxiety is a greatest bliss, so we have to aspire for that. So although because of spiritual contact, they were never separated from the Lord. So this is now when it becomes interesting. Just as the gopis of Vrindavan used to think of Krishna while he was away from the village cowherding, yeah, for cowherding arrangement, the citizens of Dwaraka were all immersed in thought of Krishna, of the Lord, whilst he was away from Dwaraka to attend the battle of Kurukshetra. So there is separation and yet there is also union. The uh, Vajabhasis, especially the Vajabhadus, the Vajagopikas, the elder gopis who have a maternal affection for Sri Krishna, when he is out uh, tending the cows and the calves, 
um, they're thinking of him. I hope he's okay. Uh, I hope uh, he has enough food. I hope I packed him enough food. Um, I hope he doesn't get into any kind of trouble. <laughs> they're thinking of him in a very affectionate way. And the younger gopis are thinking of Sri Krishna. When will we see him again? When will we see those lotus eyes again? I hope that when he is treading uh, on the pasture grounds or when he's on the paths in the forest, that his lotus feet, they're so soft, how will they cope with all the small stones and the sand and the grass? You know, he must be, uh, he, I hope he's not so uncomfortable. Um, I hope he's okay. So in this way, they're always thinking about him. They're always thinking about the times they shared together. And although it seems uh, as though they're away and apart from Sri Krishna, actually they are together with him in their thoughts, in all the chores that they're doing, in all the duties they are attending to. And it says here, Srila Prabhupada mentions, the citizens of Dwarika were all immersed in thought of the Lord whilst he was away. So similarly, the Dwarika Vaisis were also in that mood of separation. So this uh, separation is a theme that we, we see again and again in the pastimes of Sri Krishna and sometimes his other incarnations as well. But it is, it is very uh, prevalent in the pastimes of Sri Krishna. When Sri Krishna leaves uh, Vrindavan, uh, when Akrura comes to take him away, we can or we can or we can't imagine even um, the, uh, the fangs of separations uh, felt by the Brajavasis at that time. And, uh, and this is a very, very uh, important subject matter uh, in, in the 10th Canto and obviously mentioned in the Krishna book as well. And to understand this, to highlight this and to bring this to the forefront um, of, our, of our understanding of Sri Krishna, Sri Krishna sends his friend Uddhava to Vrindavan. You know, you want to see what it means to love me, go to Vrindavan, take this message spend some time there and then you'll you will see what it means to, uh, to love me because Uddhava had all of this knowledge about Vedanta and the Vedas and, and he was he was trained very wonderfully by expert spiritual teachers expert spiritual masters like Vihaspati but now he Krishna wanted to him to go to Vrindavan so that he can see what it means to love him in the way that the Vajabhasis do and that's a, another topic altogether Sri Prabhupada mentions here some distinguished fiction writer in Bengal concluded that the Krishna of Vrindavan, Dada Mathura, and Dada Dwaraka were different personalities. And Sri Prabhupada mentions historically there is no truth in this conclusion. So there is <clears throat> often, uh, not often, most of the time, Sri Krishna is very uh, badly misunderstood. And we sometimes see, we sometimes hear, read all sorts of concocted ideas about Sri Krishna and his pastimes and why did he do this and what's this and what's that. And Srila Prabhupada mentions here very clearly that it is completely uh, <clears throat> untrue, completely uh, misunderstood. And there's no even historical basis for these thoughts. Even great persons, who are political leaders with spiritual titles, even they, uh, without mentioning names, uh, they even said that if the, the same Krishna that spoke Bhagavad Gita is the same Krishna who engaged in these pastimes in Vrindavan, I want nothing to do with this Krishna. <laughs> so that's fine. Don't have anything to do with him, no problem. And then people put these people on big pedestals and give them great names and titles and they call them spiritual leaders when actually they don't even know the basics of who Sri Krishna is. And therefore it is our duty, our responsibility to understand who Sri Krishna is by systematically studying the books, starting with Bhagavad Gita and then going through the Srimad Bhagavatam so that when we get to the 10th Canto, we have a very, very firm, strong foundation to who Sri Krishna is. And then we can begin to understand the pastimes with his devotees. So uh, Srila Prabhupada mentions here, just like when the sun goes away, sometimes we feel sadness. And then when the sun rises, we feel happy. In the same way, the Dwaraka Vasis were uh, waiting for the sun of Sri Krishna to rise once again in Dwaraka. And Srila Prabhupada mentions here, 
in the purport. So all the citizens of Dwaraka woke from a state of slumber because the sunrise of Krishna had hastened towards him. Uh, Srila Bhakti Nod Thakur um, writes a, a beautiful uh, bhajan. Um, there's a few bhajans like this uh, where he speaks about uh, where he speaks about the sleeping souls uh, in this age of Kali and how Lord Chaitanya is 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 getting them to wake up. And this, this links with the, the conclusion of the purport, and I'll, I'll, I'll end soon. So Bhakti Thakur sings, Jiva Jago, Jiva Jago, Gora Chandra Bole, Kota Nidra Jao Maya, Vishachira Kole. Translation, Lord Garanga is calling, wake up, sleeping souls, wake up, sleeping souls. How long will you sleep in the lap of the witch called Maya? Vishachira Kole. So how long will you sleep there? You have forgotten the way of devotional service and are lost in the world of birth and death. And then Bhakti Thakur writes, this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu speaking, I have descended just to save you. Other than myself, you have no friend in this world. And how will he do that? I have bought the medicine that will wipe out the disease of illusion from which you are suffering. And what is that medicine? Harinama Maha Mantra Lautumi Magi. Take this Maha Mantra. This is the medicine. And then at the end, Bhakti Lotaku says, I fall at the Lord's lotus feet, having taken this Maha Mantra. So the Dwarikavasis are all eternal associates of the Lord. They are just experiencing this separation, but they're constantly thinking about the Lord, as we heard in the purports earlier. But our problem is we're not thinking about the Lord and we just want to sleep in the lap of this witch, Maya. She's torturing us, tormenting us, but still we want to remain uh, sleeping. This is our, our uh, oh my, very unfortunate situation. Sri Prabhupada then mentions, the devotees know of the Lord know no other else as protector. The devotees of the Lord know no one else as protector. The sound of the Lord is identical with the Lord, as we have tried to explain by non-dual position of the Lord. So anything which is connected with Krishna becomes spiritual, let alone the sound that Krishna makes with his conch shell. Krishna is transcendental, his conch shell is transcendental, the sound that he makes with the uh, conch shell is transcendental. The material existence of our Present status is full of fear, and then Shri Prabhupada lists all the types of fears that we have: shelter, food, fear, mating, fear, all of these problems. So fear is a default situation that we all are situated in. We may be having a really nice day, and then ding, we have some thought: oh no, I forgot something. Whether it's something on the stove, whether it's something that we need to do, a bill to pay, something we have to do in the office, or something. Or it could be obviously even greater, uh, protecting ourselves, protecting our family, whatever it may be. And we just need to look around ourselves to see around the world all the precarious situation that people are in today. So the fear problem is always prominent. This is due to our association with the illusory energy of the Lord, known as Maya or external energy. Yet all fear is vanquished as soon as there is a sound of the Lord. And here I'll connect it to what we were just reciting. Represented by his holy name as it was sounded by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the following 16 words. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. And Srila Prabhupada ends the purport in the most wonderful way. We can take advantage of these sounds and be free from all threatening problems of material existence. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to wake up the sleeping souls like me who are enjoying uh, sleeping in the lap of, of, of this witch, this Maya. She's saying, oh, no, just, you know, 10 minutes, don't worry, 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes, one more hour, one more month, two more years, don't worry, you can become serious another time, don't worry about it. You don't, you don't need to do this service today. Someone else will do it. Don't worry about it. Krishna will arrange everything. You just 
take a break. <laughs> and this time is going in our, in our slumber, in the lap of Maya. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, Jeeva Jago, Jeeva Jago. Take this uh, medicine, take this holy name. Harinama Mahamantra Lavitu Mimagi. So he has come personally to distribute this uh, Mahamantra. And he distributed it in various regions of, of, of India. And we hear in the Srimad, uh, Sri Chaitanya Bhagavata and Chaitanya Charitamrita how he personally did that. Wherever he went, he infected the people with uh, the holy name and it spread, it spread around wherever his associates went after the Lord had been, they'd seen that people were chanting and they knew, oh, this is where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu must have visited. He uh, transformed Kashi, for example. Everybody there was, uh, was practically uh, Mayavad and then he spread the, the Bhakti uh, tradition there. He spread the Mahamantra, the Sankirtan movement there. And then he told his followers to do the same thing. The Goswamis, he said, go to Vrindavan, write books on devotional service, they all spent various long um, amounts of time with him. Rupa Goswami spent 10 months with him in Jagannath Puri, Sanatana Goswami spent so much time with him. So in this way, he instructed them to continue this mission. And up until uh, the mission came in to the very capable hands of our Srila Prabhupada, who took this very, very precious cargo with him from Vrindavan, uh, which was the Srimad Bhagavatam, the holy name of the Lord, and he brought it to America single-handedly then, planted the seeds of Krishna consciousness throughout the world in very, very humble situations, um, and in this way, uh, spreading this medicine to all the sleeping souls, uh, requesting them to wake up so that we can, as Srila Prabhupada mentions in the purport right at the end, take advantage of these sounds. So that's it. The process the means, the end, everything is here in these 16 words as given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So uh, please take advantage of these sounds. I will stop my sound now so that uh, you can uh, use your time wisely. Um, thank you all so much for your tolerating me. Uh, you're very kind, allowing myself to be purified by reciting these beautiful purports um, Srila Prabhupada writes so wonderfully, so meticulously uh, explaining these uh, profound truths. Every word Srila Prabhupada writes is, is, uh, is nectar, actually, is nectar. And we are so fortunate that we have the opportunity to have this connection with um, with these purports. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has uh, empowered Srila Prabhupada to, to do this. There's no doubt about that. Um, so we are very fortunate to be in this um, association. And we're very fortunate that we have devotees like Karna Chaitanya Prabhu and others who are allowing us to discuss these matters uh, so that we all wake up and take advantage of this beautiful uh, mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Srila Prabhupada. So thank you all very much. Uh, if there's any comments, uh, complaints, questions, corrections, please uh, share them. Very good. Share. Hare Krishna, please, Ashram Prabhu. My heartfelt thanks for giving a wonderful class. You're very, very kind to all of us. Um, I ask all the devotees to come forward and uh, share their experiences or realizations, or if you have any questions or comments, please come forward. I think everyone's going to chant Hare Krishna now, taking advantage. <laughs> okay. Hello.
It looks like everyone is happy and content, Prabhu. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Wonderful class. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Thank you. His grace <laughs> Priyadarshan Prabhu Ki Jai. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gaur Premarande. Hare Krishna. I request all the devotees to join next week as well. It's a, it's a festival. And uh, uh, His Grace Bhuta Bhavana Prabhu will be giving special class on the day. So don't miss it. Please join. Hare Krishna. Thank you, everyone.